And suddenly there was a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting and it appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire sat upon their heads. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. So glad that you're tuning in with these programs and learning the Word of God. I'd like to pray for you today. Father, I thank you for the viewing audience. I thank you for their families, their children, their households, Lord. I thank you for the blessing of the gospel going into their homes, into their lives, into their heart and their spirit, their soul, manifesting a healing miracle into their lives, Lord. I thank you for your ministry, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is so important in the life of a believer. Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you the same will bring forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not be able to accomplish anything in the kingdom of God. When his word dwells richly in you, and you're rooted and grounded in the truth of the gospel, rooted and grounded in sound doctrine, not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but you're established on the foundation of Jesus Christ and him crucified and the power of his resurrection, the ministry of the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, and being established in the faith of the Son of God. You become immovable. We are to contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints' safekeeping as a believer. As a believer in Jesus Christ, to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. We're to preach his holy gospel, the doctrine, the apostles' doctrine that was given to the church is the doctrine that a true believer in Jesus Christ is to preach. Not a watered-down gospel, not a sugar-coated gospel, but the holy, unadulterated word of the living God. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost in power at the River Jordan, and he preached the gospel with power. He was endued by the Holy Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God came upon him at the River Jordan, when he came out of that water, the heavens opened and the Father said, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. The Holy Spirit came in a bodily shape like a dove. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. He was in the wilderness, tempted of the devil. He defeated the devil in the wilderness. He came into his own hometown of Nazareth. And he opened up the scriptures. Let's go there to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. I believe it's 418. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, to set at liberty those that have been bruised. He said, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. He was giving a pronouncement 
a proclamation that he is the Messiah, that he is the prophet that Moses spoke about to the nation of Israel. that he was anointed by his father. He was fulfilling the word of God. He was fulfilling the scriptures. The power of God was so strong upon Jesus' life that everywhere he went, multitudes were following him. They were hearing and seeing the mighty healings and miracles that were being done through his preaching and through his teaching. The Bible said he went preaching, teaching, and healing. His ministry consists of preaching, teaching, and healing. People came from all around to hear him preach because the word of God came with power. It came with a dunamis, a miraculous, miracle-working power. His preaching came with confirmation of the miraculous power of Almighty God delivering people from demon demoniacs, lunatics, people with sickness and disease. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God is with him. His Father was with him in the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit and fire. He told his disciples I, that he was going to his father after his, the crucifixion when he was raised from the dead. He met them in Galilee. He said, go to Galilee. He appeared to his apostles and disciples 40 days before he ascended to the father. And he gave them a commission and he taught them about the ministry of the Holy Spirit before he ever gave his life upon the cross. On that day of resurrection, he appeared to Mary Magdalene, to Peter, and to others. Even to Thomas, he said, Behold my hands, behold my feet. Because Thomas was not believing. Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen me but believe. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you are blessed. You have not seen him face to face, but you will see him. But you believe the word of God. That great promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost. Jesus paid the ultimate price, the sacrifice of himself before his Father from the life of humanity. Jesus said, except you deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. Denying yourself means you're not going to deny him. There's some so-called Christians that are denying the Lord that saves them. They're drawn away by their own lust and enticed and bring forth sin and sin death. See, there's a judgment that will begin at the house of God. And it first begins with us, where will the ungodly appear? In a believer's life that has gone their own way and backslidden before the Lord and has talked against other believers, 
and living a life of a lie and deception. See, when a person is drawn away by their own lust and enticed, it brings forth sin, sin, death. It brings great deception. When there's repentance before God, there's a godly sorrow. There's a contrition that comes into the heart of an individual. And they're acknowledging the truth. Just like David, if you go to Psalms 51, his prayer of repentance before God and cleansing. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. He's acknowledging it. See, when a person acknowledges it, they're not covering it up, but they acknowledge it. Verse 2 of Psalm 51. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is over before me, is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thy, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, that means your heart, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Do you know wisdom is the principal thing? Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. The wisdom of Christ far exceeds all the wisdom of this world. Verse 7, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Verse 12, he said, or verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Now in the original Aramaic, free spirit means glorious spirit, the glorious spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. A backslidden Christian can't teach sinners your God's ways because they're living in sin. They're loving their sin and they've laid aside God and His Word. Do you know that God's married to the backslider? There's some watching today and you know you've backslidden before God. You used to go to church and you were on fire for God and now you don't even go to church anymore and you're living a life of deception and a lie. The Spirit of God has been dealing with your heart for a long time. He's calling you to repent before the Lord 
laying aside every weight and sin which does easily beset you, and looking on to Jesus, who's the author and the finish of your faith. The joy that was set before him, he endured the cross for you, despising the shame. When you cry out to God with a re godly sorrow leads to a repent of heart. A repent of heart means forsaking all for Jesus Christ, forsaking all sin. Let the wicked forsake their way, the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let them return to the Lord. He will abundantly pardon you. He will heal your soul, and he will revive your heart. Because God revives the heart of the contrite, he revives the heart of the humble. When you humbly acknowledge the truth, just like David did, you'll see the Holy Spirit moving and stirring your heart. And when you return to the Lord, the very gift he put inside you will come alive because he calls you with the holy calling and that is to glorify Jesus Christ in your life, to magnify him and his holy gospel above all. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my words, and my Father will love you. We will come unto you and make our abode with you. We will live with you. We will manifest ourselves to you. Jesus said, abide in me, I in you. The same will bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. See, when a believer goes back to his old ways, he's going back to his own vomit. God's calling you out to call you in to what he's called you into by his grace. There has to be denying of yourself and a taking up your cross and following Jesus. A love for God and his word. A love for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When God begins to restore a person, the Bible says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That word restore in the original Hebrew means to be refreshed, to relieve, to render, to also means to repent. In Jeremiah it says, for I will restore health unto you. Jeremiah 30 verse 17, I'll restore health unto you. I'll heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. There's inner wounds in a person's soul and their emotions. That God will heal you. God will restore you. God will eradicate that very wound that came into your emotional soul. He'll eradicate it because the word is health to all of our flesh. God's word is like a two-edged sword. It goes between the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. His word will go directly to that very place of your soul and bring a miraculous healing into your life. Your eyes of your understanding will be illuminated by the Holy Spirit to know and understand the great love that he has for you, to restore you to wholeness. Apostle Paul preached that your, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved to the coming of the Lord. God wants the whole you, spirit, soul, and body, came for the, tr for the 
whole part of man. When he does the restoration in your soul, it will affect your mind, will, and emotions. It will affect your physical body. Your wor the word of God will bring a healing into your physical body. He will heal you of the past trauma in your life. He will heal that area of your brain where there was trauma. He'll restore your soul. He'll put joy in, back into your heart again. Because when there's a returning back to the Lord, you're returning back to the one who is, gives you the well of salvation, who imparts the joy of salvation, because salvation comes from the Lord. The Bible says in Joel 2.25, I'll restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. He'll restore those years back into your life where the devil stole out of your life. And that word restore in Joel 2.25 in the original Hebrew, shalom, to be safe in mind, body, and estate, to reciprocate in various applications, to make amends, to make good, peace, prosper, to make restitution. The Lord begins to restore you every part of you, spirit, soul, and body. He will pour out his spirit upon you. He'll begin to reveal himself to you. Because when there is a crying out that you want to know the Father that sent Jesus, that was Jesus' prayer before the Father. Father, that they may, might know you, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent, for this is eternal life. This is the eternal life, to know the Father and his Son. See, no man can come to the Father except the Spirit of God draw him. The Holy Spirit is drawing people today on this program that you've been backslidden in your heart. And you've been living a life of a lie and deception. This is a day of salvation. It's being proclaimed to you. Return unto the Lord and he'll abundantly pardon. He'll restore joy unto you. He'll restore peace unto you. See, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him who trusts him. When your heart is loaded with unbelief, it becomes evil. An evil heart of unbelief, of departing from the Lord, is called an evil heart. When people pray before God, some people pray with a heart full of unbelief because they want everything their way. Let the wicked forsake their way. Unrighteous man is thoughts. Let them return to the Lord. God dwells in the heart of the humble and revives the heart of the humble and the contrite ones. When there is a true contrition in your heart, a turning to the Lord and cleaving to him and his holy gospel, denying yourself, taking up your cross and following Jesus, honoring him and his holy gospel, honoring the Father that sent him. What great honor is to honor the Father of glory. What great honor is to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the true shepherd that gave his life for the sheep, poured out his soul unto death, shed his holy blood to remit sin. 
gave his life as a ransom for all. He is the holy lamb that was slain for you. He is now at the right hand of the Father, full of power and glory and honor. And all praise and glory and honor goes to the Lamb. All the angels in heaven cry out, Holy. All the redeemed of the Lord cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor, glory, and power. This can be a brand new day in your life of letting the light of the holy gospel of Jesus Christ shine into your heart and into your life, living for him and his gospel, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together with other believers. Pray and ask God that he would plant you under a true shepherd, a pastoral gift to the body of Christ to learn the word of God. And when you begin to learn the word of God, you begin to submit under spiritual authority, your life will be transformed forever. Your life will take on a brand new dimension. A brand new dimension of knowing God. Having your mind renewed and your spirit full of the fire of God. The comforts of the Holy Spirit will be upon you. He'll begin to wash you and cleanse you from your past, from all your iniquity. And he'll restore unto you that exceeding joy, the very joy that Jesus endured on the cross will come into your heart, the joy of salvation. Thank you so much for watching. Times of refreshing. Thank you. And we will see you the next program. God bless you. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.